from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering .next Conference. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to Nutanix.next, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. Alan Cohen is here. He's the chief commercial officer of hot startup Illumio. Alan, friend of theCUBE, great to see you again. Always happy to be here. If you, if wherever you guys are, I'm going to show it's, it's up. It's nice not to be in Silicon Valley for a change. Right, you know, the real world, you have yeah. to tell it to John right. Furrier. The things happen outside of Palo Alto. So the, yeah. time, <laughs> the timing of this interview is perfect because we just had Stephen Hadley on, who's yeah. sort of a public policy expert. We're talking about basically uh, uh, how industry should really lead with this whole new era of, of cyber. And he was talking about that if we let government do it, they're probably going to mess it up. Right. So it's guys like yourselves and others you know, in our industry that really have to lead. So, uh, but before we do that, give us the update on Illumio. You just guys did another big raise. You guys are smoking hot, growing like crazy. What's the update? So, I mean, so since we spoke to you guys last, yeah, we did have a little um, funding round. It was led by uh, JP Morgan uh, Chase. You might have heard of them. They have credit cards and branches and things like that. <laughs> uh, actually, they're also a customer of Illumio's. Uh, which is a really big deal, they are advanced. So, you know, we're growing very rapidly, a lot of geographic expansion, a lot of technology expansion, and I think, um, actually in today and this morning, Sunil and the uh, uh, technology roadmap talked about micro-segmentation, um, the ability to create really smaller and smaller or watertight compartments around your data, down even to the workload or the process level, is just going to be a way that people are going to have to be able to do their computing. And so as you look at the journey now from data center or enterprise cloud into public cloud, um, this, this approach of security that we're building is a key component in allowing people to take advantage of cloud architectures. So that's also really led to our growth. So I, mean, I think it's fair to say you guys are really the pioneer of this concept of micro-segmentation. Yeah. Uh, uh, others have sort of hopped on board. Well, I got to give VMware credit. They actually did bring they, it up they first. Were, they were first if you, but it to commercialize in, it. Yeah, they commercialized it in their environment. I would say Illumio is the first company to, through software to commercialize it in all environments. In a cloud, in a box, with a fox, in a house, with a mouse, bare metal, virtual machines, containers, Amazon, Azure, Oracle, across all of those environments simultaneously. And I think you know, we were talking earlier this morning about the idea of multi-cloud, right? So you're going to pick your cloud based on where the workload and the application should live, so your security has to move with that. And that's really what we've focused on. Right, okay, so VMware's there, you know Cisco's in there as well. Sort yeah, of I heard of those guys. Duking it out. Yeah. Uh, well, so where do you, how do you feel about your competitive position? Let me talk about that a little bit. Uh, well, we feel good that our competitors have finally kind of woken up and started to amplify our message um, about this. You know, at the end of the day, you have to make a decision whether your goal of building security is to drive the sale of your infrastructure or is, the, or is to make you know, your customers' um, environments more secure wherever they run. So in their own environments, they're, adding, they're clearly adding value. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're dependent on maintaining server licenses or upgrading your switches. That's not a really good motivation for how to make your security decision. You should make your security decision based on what you're trying to do, not what infrastructure you're in. Okay, so um, now what about the traditional security guys? Are they catching up? Are they hopping on board? Do they, do they just think this is a niche that's not worth it or do they just miss the boat? Well, you know, uh, with, with the um, eye of being respectful and, and, and aggressive at the same time, um, I think most of the firewall vendors have been primarily focused on the perimeter, and then they've looked at APT technologies, things like FireEye have done, and they've made a lot of their investments there, so they have not been as focused. Now, to also be fair, in the heart of the data center, in the public cloud, you don't see firewall technology, right? So people said, I have this hard, crunchy exterior, I protect the perimeter of my environment, and I assume once I protect the perimeter, the inside is safe. So their traditional model didn't lend itself to that kind of introspection and focus on the interior. What's happened in the last couple of years though, and you had Hadley on, is that the focus of uh, cyber has shifted to the interior, right? So Target, Sony, OPM, all the big breaches started with 
basically vulnerabilities on the inside that have then kind of spread and then exfiltrated outside of the organization. So we started focusing on the inside out, not the outside in. I mean, I think ultimately the large security vendors and parameters, they're partners of ours, because you're going to wind up working both sides of the equation. Yeah, because even an air gap doesn't protect you. You don't want an air gap. Actually, yeah. you know, we have a partnership with F5. We actually talk, we talked about it with theCUBE a couple of years ago because yeah, you think about the concept of something like a load balancer, it sits between tiers of applications. You don't want that to be a black box. Mm -hmm. So the, the, you know, the basically, um, the world is moving into the zero trust model, so trust nothing. And you know, it's like it's kind of like running it like you know, like in a mod. It's like the Sopranos. Like you, 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 you got to make sure everybody does the collections, and every, everybody's got to check in every day. Everything's got to be part of the security fabric. Uh, Alan, so bringing it back to, to the Nutanix uh, yeah. discussion, we, we had Sunil on earlier, yeah. and in the keynote this morning, I saw broad ecosystem, love our partners, saw Illumio. Huge uh, logo, slide, isn't that great? Logo, yeah. They got it, man, they finally really, figured you know, it out. Unleash yeah. the Kraken, yeah. uh, you know, uh, right. uh, up there. Um, and I asked, uh, I asked Neil, how do you balance the, we're going to have a broad ecosystem, but, you know, seems a lot of energy is be putting into AHV. And one of the examples yeah. he brought up was like, oh, well, if you buy, if you use AHV, you know, you get micro-segmentation for yeah. free included in there. What are you seeing? How does Nutanix fit into the micro-segmentation Yeah, I mean, uh, look, you know, I mean, I showed the slides too, right? Yeah. So, if you remember how he defined it, if I have 10 workloads and I want to segment them off, um, I will put it in what I call micro-segmentation. And that to me is like a network, virtual network segment, but he said you don't have to use an SCN overlay. And that is not any different than what a security group does in Amazon or Azure, and I assume Google has its own version of that. When you go into that a couple of levels deeper, that's where Illumio lives. So we live inside public cloud security groups today and across them and to non-environment. So you got to remember, a lot of people are going to have Nutanix workloads, but then they're going to have workloads sitting in Azure and they're not going to have anything to do with each other for a while from a software point of view. So Lumio is really that bridge. So I mean, I think it's, it's, it's actually a fairly synergistic kind of relationship yeah. to, do, to do that. So, yeah. um, you know, actually for me, that recognition and that um, communication of micro-segmentation into their base is, is really good. So, yeah. um, so, I mean, you're always going to have a little bit of yeah. overlap. I mean, they're smart, they really build, yeah. they build great software. So, so it sounds like you're saying the, the, the definitions of micro-segmentation uh, are a little bit complementary, and you're also going to help with that, that heterogeneous mess that everybody yes. has and gives them consistent security right. across those We don't define micro-segmentation yeah. that way. I might yeah. want to say, I want to micro-segment off one workload, or I want to segment processes, or I'm going to have a Cooper Kubernetes application running someplace, and then I'm going to have the core database someplace ask how do I move across that. So it's granularity and flexibility of the use yeah, case Yeah, yeah, we have this thing we call the wheel of cheese from the segmentation, so there's like rough unit segmentation, then there's micro, and then there's nano, so over time, people are going to basically close the gates tighter and tighter, so, because the challenge in cyber is lateral spread. Like you guys, you do, you know, you have these fast high speed networks. So if I compromise one server, one workload, today it flies through the environment. So you actually have to keep closing those doors from a security point of view. So, I mean, I think it was a great first move for them and I mean, we like it, it works really well. We, we work with other vendors, um, cloud vendors today that do some form of segmentation. So I know we're super tight on time, everybody wants to talk security and yeah. you know, schedule spec. John Furry is watching. No oh surprise. no, all right, hey John. And so when, when he has to give up the mic, there's always CrowdChat, so he's got a question in CrowdChat for you. Ask Alan about the economics of cy the cyber security business models with all this stuff going on with cyber war and ransomware yes. and... So you know, here's, a, here's some stats. You guys are great analysts, you focus on this. So cyber security is about a hundred billion dollar business, somewhere between 80 and 100, depending on who's counting on that. Think about that in the scheme of overall IT. How much is IT? Three trillion dollars? Trillions, three billion, yeah. Right? So hundred billion dollars is a fairly small segment. 
Now I would be disingenuous as a vendor, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. I would say people are highly underinvested in security relative, Stu's laughing his head off, right? So you have, well, you know, you have, I mean, you, you, have, you have families. You Alan, it's not insurance. a big enough pie for you, come on. No, it's not. <laughs> I think the pie should be like five times bigger. I mean. You don't want to make that comparison with health insurance. You though, have health insurance, you have life insurance, you have insurance on your car, you have insurance on your home. You guys are high net worth individuals. You probably have policies so you don't get sued. You probably spend 10% of your total income on forms of insurance, things yeah. that protect you and your family. So you're saying it should be triple the spend. Why are you only spending two well, or 3% of your IT given the criticality of the data that's sitting in those environments? Okay, so we know we only pay for insurance <coughs> when we need it. In marketing, the joke's always, I waste half of my money, I just yeah. don't know which half. You know, how much are we wasting in security versus? Well, if, I mean, I think if you're buying infrastructure-based models, you're spending, you're building, you're, you're wasting a lot. Illumio is a consumption-based model based on how much you use. So, I mean, we look more like, you know, it's a per operating system instance that you pay a yearly license for. So I think we're closer to the Amazon consumption model for security, and we've led with that four years ago when we started the company. So I think if security became more like you pay as you go, and less pay for just having it, just as we talked about the different models for infrastructure, where I own it, where I rent it, and where I pay as I go, I think you will get better spent. Um, I mean, we effectively sell security the way Uber sells, uh, or Lyft sells car. When you need to pay for it, use it, you pay for it. And so, there's probably a whole lot of efficiency that could be there, but I'd argue it's underinvested. Well, the other dimension of that is inside out versus yeah. outside in. I mean, building more moats, we yeah. know, Still, well, here, more money is spent well, on here, Well, here's a stat. So, the vast bulk of data center security, so the perimeter firewall market's about a $10 billion market. Only about, Cisco just had a, their announcement this week about their cloud index. 17% of the traffic, uh, net traffic goes in and out of the data center, and about 80% of it's inside, and a little bit of it goes to the colo, right? So you are putting all your investment on 17% of your traffic. Right. That's like buying all those cable channels. You watch the cooking channel, you're paying for it. You're watching rugged outdoor fisherman <laughs> uh, channel, you're paying for it. So I think you're going to have to, just like you're making your in infrastructure investments are moving to paying for what you use, your security investments have to go the same way. So why would you put all your money only guarding 17% of your network traffic? Okay, uh, we're out of time, but so, uh, last question. What are you guys going to do? What, what, what are you doing with this big bag of money that you just got? Where, where are you directing it? What's, well, what's I mean, I think strategy? we're probably going to have to hire the cube to come to like Illumio Fantastic, World. Fantastic, let's do that. Yeah, Illumio. we're totally going to do that, but. Um, you, really, what, what's the show? Illumio World, is you guys. Well, there's going to be an Illumio World. Okay. You guys, when we launch it, you guys are going right, to be there. Fantastic, we'd love so, to be there. So, uh, there's no doubt, you heard that you have it in writing, right? You have it on video, <laughs> yeah, like testimony. Even better. I can't even say I didn't yeah. tweet it, like you'll have a record we on it. We can shame you into it. I totally <laughs> shame you into it. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of geographic expansion of the company. We're about to expand down under and other places. We've been mostly North American and parts of Europe and a lot of investment going into the channel, strategic partnerships, and I mean, a lot like Nutanix, I mean, our company's half R&D, we're going to invest just as heavily a year from now, we'll still be half R&D, even with Love growth, because we have a lot of platform to build, and we're building a platform that's going to be around for decades. So there's still a lot of engineering to do too. Alan, we love having you on. You're plugged in. Great Silicon Valley friend. Really appreciate Thank you coming you. back. Appreciate you having me today. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, All right, guys. keep it right there, everybody. We're back with our next guest after this short break. This is theCUBE. We're live from NextConf. Be right back.